So that is still open for investigation. We are, uh, that, that experiment is set up and running again right now. But the heats uh, were fairly small. The baseline experiment that we've done the most with has been a, a dead palladium rod, one that never got started because of uh, some metallurgical reasons probably, or some uh, surface effects. And that rod gives absolute, in the same cells, under all the same conditions, gives absolutely the same amount of heat out that you put in. But the active uh, palladium rod that had been acting in uh, D2O does not give that in, in plain water. It gives, a, it gives a slightly higher amount of heat out. What data or uh, scientific arguments makes you exclude the possibility that the additional energy you see uh, is from other exothermic chemical reactions? The amount of heat that's generated I do not think can be explained by, a, by a, a chem any known chemical reaction. Uh, you measure the volume of water that you're consuming, you measure the deuterium and hydrogen that you, uh, the deuterium and oxygen that you're getting out. Uh, I, I, I can't conceive of any other chemical reaction. We, we, all, all of the electrical energy that go after, the, uh, after gases are, are uh, evolved at the electrodes, if you measure the gases, if you measure those gases that you, you could count for like 99.7 percent of all the of all the liquid that's being consumed and all the gases that are being produced. So it balances. So I don't know what other chemical reaction could be sustained for that sort of periods of time that would give up that much energy. Uh, I heard some discussion that uh, uh, the lithium uh, as the electrolyte uh, was not simply an alkali, you could not probably replace it with sodium or potassium. Is there anything to this? No, we are indeed doing potassium, sodium, and uh, perdeuterated tetraalkyl ammonium salts right now. Uh, lithium was chosen for a number of reasons, but uh, uh, we, we simply stuck with it during the whole tenure of these experiments. But lithium might play a, a part. It is, it is plated onto or alloys with uh, and is stable with uh, in aqueous solutions on a, on a palladium surface. So it, it, it is in the metal, but uh, not to a great extent, but it, there is some in the metal. It doesn't diffuse very far in. Between lithium six or lithium seven. I had one slide here. There, that reaction certainly has been has been uh, implicated, and we will have to look for the, the appropriate products for that reaction as well. I think the sodium and potassium experiments will sort that out quickly. They do not uh, alloy with deuterium. I mean, with uh, palladium. <laughs> If you assume that all of your heat comes from conventional nuclear reactions, how many neutrons would you have expected? How much tritium would you have expected? And how does that compare with what you measured? There's 10 to the ninth times more than we're seeing. We would expect so to see 10 to the ninth times more than, than we can account for by the heat that we see. So you say you can't understand how you would have gotten the energy by conventional chemical means, but we can also understand how you would get it by conventional uh, nuclear means. Is that, is that fair? Conventional nuclear means, that's fair. The reaction that's been proposed is the, uh, the uh, internal conversion of an excited state helium-4 atom uh, down to its ground state in the metal lattice. Would you just uh, discuss a little bit the uh, ratio of deuterium to uh, the plating that, is, uh, that you are getting in, in uh, the deuteride and also the uh, closest approach that you expect that you need to have in order for this to uh, be we, we, we think from just from, well, from several considerations that we must be close to one atom of deuterium per atom of uh, palladium in the metal. Conventional, in conventional beta palladium hydride, you have between 0.65 and 0.75. That's after you take it out and measure it. But we think under the conditions of the experiment, that probably uh, approaches one. And further, we think that these deuterons are located in the octahedral sites, probably multiple, uh, multiple accumulation in the octahedral uh, lattice sites in, in, the, in the metal, hence the close proximity. And if there is an effective mass, uh, large uh, mass electron shielding uh, these at, at this proximity, then it could be a cold fusion reaction. Uh, I 
compositions of uh, 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 hydrogen and palladium, <coughs> hydrogen dissolving in palladium metal, and hydrogen in palladium hydride have the same, or essentially the same zero point energy. Uh, what sort of transformation occurs at these higher compositions? That, that what, how would you explain uh, the disappearance of zero point energy, which gives you the large separation factor? Well, the to certainly do ab initio calculations on, on this, taking into consideration the very high electrode potential across the interface. Go ahead. And, yeah. Okay. And uh, under these conditions, I mean, it's simply that that is what is observed. You do not observe these high, you do, do not observe these high potential differences if there's not an electrode potential applied. But palladium diffusion, exper diffusion tube experiments, uh, uh, Super base formation on the inside of palladium uh, diffusion tubes, things like this, certainly support that the chemical potential has been raised markedly uh, in that lattice. So uh, I think it is just due to the additional compression that is afforded by the continued uh, diffusion of this material under the very high electrical potential conditions that you put on the surface, very high surface coverage conditions. So it, it's, we're not going to be able to tell that until the proper calculations are done. <coughs> 